share my own personal story before. Uh, I won't be a broken record, but it is what it is, right? I can pretty much relate to, with the exception of having both parents in the household, I can relate to every character in that movie. Every character. Um, I was trying not to talk. I, when uh, Vina and I walked in the movie, I was like, all right, don't be that one that's talking through the movie, and then I'm the one talking through the movie. <laughs> but I'm that mom, right? Just last night, I'm on about grades, college apps, the whole nine, right? I'm worried sick about you, but you gotta go to school tomorrow, you know? So I'm that mom. I also understand the, the neighborhood dynamics. I also understand um, choices and why people make the choices that they make. It might not be the right thing to do, might not be the legal thing to do, but as a young person, I, I, I understand, so you guys are too young for you to know about starter jackets. Some people in the room. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. My older cousin, we were raised like siblings. And my older cousin, he always had the brand new, I'm really taking myself. He had the brand new Nike Cortez with every starter that came out, whether he liked the team or not. So a starter is a puff coat that represents a particular football team or whatever, right? And you, if you had, they represent, yes, yeah, they bring out the starter. Right? Right? So I wanted a starter jacket, because he had all the starter. I wanted a Raider starter jacket. But somehow, because I'm from Oakland, somehow he came up with a Cleveland Browns puff coat. <laughs> they didn't win a thing during that time. But he came home so and it's so but well, I'm better than Raiders right now. But all of that to say, he came home, I was in the eighth grade, maybe, maybe even the seventh grade, and he brought me this this starter jacket, it was the Browns starter jacket, and I was so excited about it because I finally had a starter. You know, we didn't have money like that. Those things were expensive. And I wore it to school for like two days, and I was like, oh, she got the new starter, she got the new starter. And my aunt, before I knew it, had come and yanked it. And I never saw it again because I knew how he got it. She knew how he got it. And he was in high school at the time, but she didn't want anything purchased with dope money or drug money, I'll say, because some of our, our, our folks get confused when we say dope, saying dope is good, dope is awesome, great um, <laughs> drug. <laughs> didn't want it purchased with drug money and didn't want me walking around representing that. But I didn't see it as something purchased with drug money. I just saw it as a young person with me walking around with the latest jacket. So all of that to say, I come from a place where I know people made poor choices because they thought they had to do to provide, right? But had it not been for my aunt and my grandmother stepping in and snatching him up every now and again, and unfortunately he had to be arrested several times, um, to break that cycle, who knows what would have happened, right? I was also that Catholic school girl, and I tell people that had I not gone to a Catholic to the school that I went to, it wasn't, I didn't get sent there to learn how to pray. I was raised in a Baptist church. And there first thing in the morning and didn't leave until way into the morning, yeah. right? But it wasn't for that. My, my family wanted me to change my peer group, which is exactly what happened. So all of that to say, I understand. And I don't know if did anybody pick up on the, on the nuanced um, little statements about for the black officers, you're on the wrong side. Yeah. Why aren't you with us? Mm -hmm. We deal with that every day as black officers yes. here. Why aren't you standing up? Why aren't you... Um, defending us. Why are you allowing them to kill us? And just like Common said in the movie, it's more complex than that. So even in my position as a black female police chief with two sons that are 20 and 17, right? Because every time, oh my gosh, when he said he was getting back in the car, my heart sank. Because I'm a mother first. I tell people that. I understand what she's feeling. I understand what the grandmother was feeling because my grandmother raised her grandkids as her own. So I get all of that. But if you don't take anything else away from that, because one of the first things that stood out to me was the power that's in your voice of our young people, which is why I try to sit back and say, I'm not gonna talk that much because I wanna hear from you. We're quick sometimes as older folks to dismiss what you have to say. Oh, you don't know that yet, you ain't living. Right. My grandmother used to say, keep living, right? <laughs> you know a lot. And your perspective is far from priceless and invaluable. Regardless of what school you go to, you live and you walk and speak in your truth. And you saw 
how once she became confident enough mm -hmm. to stand up. Now, I'm gonna say this, if you hear a dispersal order, go. <laughs> it's Hollywood. But all of that to say, you are in a time and a space now where you have a voice, a powerful, powerful voice. Every time I speak to young folks, I say, look, we spend our time on you. I'm spending my time with you guys at um, whatever time of night it is right now. Because when it's time to retire, I want to sit on my porch in my rocking chair and knowing that all the decisions made for me in my older age, policies, laws, all of that, they're going to make sense. Who are going to be